So it's my pleasure to welcome you to the session on social network analysis and graph algorithms, in particular on the topic on clustering and contrastive learning. Uh, my name is Marc Spaniol. I'm professor uh, at the University of Caen, Normandy, and I'm your session chair for today. And as of today, we have five papers to be presented, each of them strictly 15 minutes presentation, three minutes Q and A. And in order to not, or in order not to waste any time, we will directly start with the first paper, which is cluster SCL, cluster aware supervised contrastive learning on graphs, which is a joint work between the People's University or Renmin University of China, uh, the Ministry of Education, Tsinghua University, and the University of Queensland, and presented by Yangling Wang uh, in cooperation with her collaborators Jin Zhang, Hao Liang Li, Yu Xia Dong, Hong Zhi Jin, Ko Ping Li, and Hong Zhen. So, Jangling, the floor is yours. Please start. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Yan Ling Wang from Renmin University of China. Uh, today, I will introduce our recent work, Cluster SCL, Cluster Aware Supervised Contrastive Learning on Graphs. In recent years, uh, learning on graph data has received lots of attention. Uh, in this work, we focus on the node classification, which is widely studied in knowledge graph, social network, a biological graph, recommendation system, and so on. The most popular framework to perform node classification includes 2K components, uh, a GL encoder and a classifier. Uh, the GL encoder encodes uh, load representations according to the uh, graph structure and the load attributes. Then based on the load representations, uh, the classifier predicts node labels. Uh, for the model optimization, uh, the cost entropy loss is widely used to optimize both the encoder and the classifier. Um, besides uh, besides so, uh, cross entropy, uh, supervised contrastive loss is also uh, effective. Uh, this loss function is proposed recently in, uh, in civil domain and uh, shows advantages over uh, cross entropy uh, on the ImageNet classification tasks. Uh, here we call it supercon loss. Supercon loss is inspired by the uh, info NCE loss and the targets to poor representations of the same class closer and those of different uh, than those of different classes. Uh, the subcon loss works under a two-stage training scheme. Uh, and uh, the first stage uh, employs subcon loss to uh, optimize the encoder uh, so that uh, the difficulty of discovering classification boundaries can be reduced. Then based on the NERD encoder, um, the second stage uh, uses cross entropy loss to optimize the classifier. Uh, in our work, uh, we suggest to optimize both the encoder and the classifier at the second stage. Despite the success of subcon, uh, subcon loss uh, could be suboptimal under the, uh, for the datasets with large intercast uh, variances and high intercast similarities. Um, uh, for, exa for example, um, in a social network, uh, U1, U3, or U2, U4, uh, they come from the same class, uh, but they have different graph uh, graph patterns and live in gra different uh, graph communities. Conversely, uh, U1, U2, or U3, U4, uh, they come they come from different classes, but they have uh, similar graph patterns. Uh, so in the embedding space, uh, when we pour U4 to its anchor load U2, we will indirectly pour together U2 and uh, U4, U3. However, U2 and U3 come from different classes. 
Meanwhile, uh, if we push U1 away from its anchor load U2, we will indirectly push uh, U2 and U5 away from each other. Uh, however, U2 and U5 come from the same class. In other words, uh, Supka allows could uh, misinterpret the intrinsic data property when the data has large interclass variances and high interclass similarities. As a result, uh, the difficulty of discovering classification boundaries uh, can be increased. To solve this problem, we express the intrinsic data property by the load cluster distributions and uh, target to retain the cluster distributions during supervised contrastive learning. A straightforward solution to achieve this goal is to perform supervised contrastive learning within each cluster. Uh, how we call this solution group sensitive subcon or GS subcon. However, this straightforward solution could overlook some potentially useful positive sample pairs, such as U1 and U3, because they come from the same class, but they are partitioned into different class clusters. Uh, in our solution, uh, we design a cluster aware data augmentation module to augment the positive and the negative samples for each anchor load. We hope the augmented sample contains information from the original positive or negative sample and also stays closer to the cluster of the anchor. Uh, to achieve this goal, we interpolate the embeddings of the anchor's cluster center and the anchor's positive or negative sample. Uh, especially, uh, the weight of linear interpolation can be uh, automatically adjustable. Uh, for example, given an uh, anchor load VI and its positive or negative sample VJ, uh, if they are far away from each other, as shown in this figure, uh, we tend to decay more information from VJ uh, so that the augmented sample and the anchor are allowed too far away from each other. But if VI and VJ already uh, stay close to each other, we tend to indirectly contrast between them. So we include more information from VJ into the uh, augmented sample. By doing this, uh, the augmentations narrow the embedding space for supervised contrastive learning. Uh, so that the pulling strings and the pushing strings between original sample pairs can be indirectly weakened to help retain the load cluster distributions. Uh, and uh, we think this is why our solution can work under the intercast uh, variances and intercast similarities. Uh, more specifically, we perform supervised contrastive uh, learning to contrast between the anchor and the virtual augmentations derived by cluster aware data augmentation. Uh, considering that we don't know which cluster or anchor load, uh, anchor load should belong to, uh, we design a, a soft clustering module to calculate the cluster distribution for each anchor load. Finally, we unify the uh, soft clustering, the cluster aware data augmentation, and the uh, supervised contrast contrast process via a probabilistic model and employees a variational EM algorithm for inference and learning. Uh, we observe that only using the stochastic update for the cluster prototypes uh, could make most of the loads assigned to the same cluster. Uh, so to uh, alleviate this problem, we update the cluster prototypes with graph community information after each training epoch. Um, more specifically, we, um, before the training, we per perform Metis algorithm to partition the whole graph into several graph communities. Uh, after each training epoch, we will average the load embeddings in each graph community to 
update the corresponding cluster prototype. Uh, we perform, we conduct experiments on five widely used benchmark data sets for, class, uh, for load classification and compare with the supervised objective the uh, cross entropy and uh, supercon to evaluate uh, how cluster uh, SCL performs for supervised learning of uh, the graphing coder. And we also uh, compare with the unsupervised objectives, uh, DJI and DCI. DJI and DCI all, also works under the two-stage training scheme. And the DCI is proposed upon DJI to alleviate the problem, which is very similar to the intercast uh, variances and intercast similarities discussed in this paper. From the overall evaluation, we can see that the two-stage training scheme generally performs better than the end-to-end -end training scheme. And we can see that cluster SCL outperforms SUPCAN on most of the data sets. And uh, the unsupervised DGI and DCI also obtain good performance. Uh, we think the reason is that DGI and DCI are, all, uh, DCI are unsupervised method. Uh, so they are independent from the class labels. Um, as a result, they are more robust to the intercast variances and intercast similarities um, in the data set. Um, we also compare with the uh, straightforward solution GS SUPCON. Uh, we can see that GS SUPCON derives can, um, comparable or better performance compared with SUPCON. Uh, this implies that uh, modeling cluster distribu uh, dis distributions is, um, is useful for the supervised contrastive learning. And uh, we can see that uh, cluster SCL outperforms GS SUPCON on most of the data sets. Uh, that's because um, our method cluster SCL considered uh, the, this, uh, uh, this potentially useful um, sample pairs, which are from the same class, but, uh, locate, but locate in different clusters. But these sample pairs are overlooked by the GS SUPCON. Um, besides, we, uh, we study uh, how cluster SCL performs under different sizes of labeled training data. We can see that cluster SCL consistently outperforms the cross entropy and subcon on different data sets. And uh, we can also see that uh, subcon um, could fail to outperform cross entropy on some data sets. That's because uh, increasing the labeled training data could amplify the negative impacts of intercast variances and intercast similarities. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, lots of existing studies have leveraged the, the deep learning, uh, deep clustering um, techniques to enhance the contrastive learning. Um, uh, but most of these methods uh, assume that each positive sample pair share similar cluster distributions. Um, however, uh, due to the intercast variances and intercast similarities in the real world applications, we consider the situation that each positive sample pair can have these similar cluster distributions. Uh, in concluding, uh, we propose our supervised learning method, uh, cluster SCL, to alleviate uh, the negative impacts of intercast variances and intercast similarities. And we think um, this, uh, the, the sort of cluster SCL is not restricted to load classification on graphs. Um, however, uh, uh, the cluster SCL is hard to, is also difficult to address the tough non homophonic graphs. Uh, while the collected loads tend to have very dissimilar uh, labels and uh, features. Uh, so, in the future work, we will consider how to extend our method to handle this, this kind of data sets. And we will also consider how to extend the cluster SCL to uh, the graph level class classification tasks. Uh, that's all my presentation. Thank you for listening. 
Man, many okay. thanks, Jiang Lin. Uh, you are perfectly uh, on time. Uh, so now the question is, are there any questions from the audience? Yes. May yes. I have a question? Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. And uh, um, the proposed uh, cluster where data computation and uh, one existing work called uh, Mixup both adopts the uh, operation of linear interpolation to generate virtual data points. But uh, um, what are the differences between them? Oh, okay. Thanks, Zhihao. Thanks for your que your question. Uh, I think it's a very good question. Mm. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, yes, uh, the cluster aware data augmentation is somehow similar to uh, the mix up technique. Um, mm, uh, because both of them use the linear interpolation to generate some virtue uh, samples, but there, uh, there, uh, there uh, exists um, some difference between them. Um, for the mix-up, mix-up is proposed to uh, uh, enhance the generalization ability of our graph neural network, um, and it uh, performs uh, linear interpolation between uh, different sample or uh, different samples to uh, generate some virtuous uh, data augmentations. Um, but for our method, the cluster aware data augmentation, we do not perform. Uh, linear interpolation between different samples, but we uh, perform linear interpolation between our cluster center and our sample. And uh, our target is to help uh, our supervised contrastive learning uh, perform uh, perform better uh, on the data sets with, in, with uh, uh, large intercast variances and high intercast similarities. Uh, six. Mm. Thank you for your explanation. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, thank, hello, uh, thank you. Thank you for your presence. We cannot hear you. Hello. Um, unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Please uh, open up your mic or uh, you have to wait. Uh, maybe I have one more question to you, Yang Ling. Um, on slide 14, you showed basically the results of your experiments. So I'm just wondering, you mentioned before in PubMed, you have only three classes. Uh, I mean, uh, there are only three classes in PubMed? How come? Oh, um, uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I want to confirm. Uh, uh, you, 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 are, you mean that... Uh, uh, how to determine the uh, number of clusters? Uh, no, no, between... you, you mentioned you have three classes in PubMed only. Yeah, I mean, yes. this, this seems to be very low in contrast to the others. So just why, why are there only three classes in PubMed? Three class yes, for PubMed? You, yes, uh, you have in the data. Uh, uh, this, okay. uh, no, no, this... no, yes, here you mentioned you have three classes in PubMed. Three class, yes. PubMed. You say the data set PubMed has three class, three, yes. three classes. Yes. Uh, so only uh, three classes is. I mean, this is fairly low. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, because this part, this, this data set is a benchmark data set. So, uh, I I can get, I I can get. Uh, uh okay. and lots of a lot of studies uh, also use this benchmark data sets. Okay. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks uh, Yang Lin. So maybe we can take some other questions uh, offline.